In this video, we're talking about Wirecast 14. If you're brand new to Wirecast, then this is going to be the video for you. What's going on, everybody? Monty Weaver here, helping you navigate through digital tech and social media. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Wirecast. I'm actually going to do a series on Wirecast because it's my favorite live streaming platform and I want to introduce it to you and help you navigate through it if it's a platform that you want to use for your live streaming. Now, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit those notification bells. That way you don't miss a video every single time I upload one. Now let's get into Wirecast. Now I've been using Wirecast since version seven. So I've been around a long time as a Wirecast user and because I've been around for a long time should give you a good indication that it is a platform that I definitely like. Now Wirecast is a production level live streaming platform. There are so many out on the market to choose from today, but Wirecast really does it all. And if you're looking to take your live stream to the next level, then this is going to be the platform that you may want to consider if you haven't already. But chances are you've heard about Wirecast because you're watching this video. So I want to do a series of videos to walk you through some of the different features of the platform. That way it can help you benefit by actually using the platform and learning some of the tips that I've picked up along the way. Now, I've been using Wirecast for myself as a live streamer on my Facebook and YouTube channels, but I've also recommended it to churches and nonprofits so that they can live stream as well. And I can't forget about sporting events. This is a great platform for any type of live streaming to take that production level to the next level. So let's jump into the computer and let's go through some basics of how you can use Wirecast 14. Welcome to Wirecast 14. Now, if you've used previous versions of Wirecast, this should look very familiar to you, if not the exact same. Now, there's some differences that I've tweaked for my specific setup, but I want to walk through the main elements of Wirecast 14 for those of you all that are brand new to the platform. At the very top of the screen, you see that we have our file, edit, switch, media, output, layout, replay, ISO, social, window, and help navigation menus to choose from. If we select the new section, this allows us to create a brand new Wirecast template. We can also open previous templates that we've created in the past so that we don't have to create a brand new setup all over again. We can also save these, close the windows, and we also have preferences. So I'll quickly go into preferences and this will allow you to see more detailed information that you can change. Things that I like to adjust are my transition buttons, which happen to be just below this menu box. So I could have three transition buttons or just two. And you can see that change when I select two to three. And then also under the left hand side, I like to make sure that I'm using the highest frame rates for our shot display. Your license information is in the third tab. Software updates, so definitely make sure that you're checking for the latest and greatest software as Wirecast updates and has new releases. Shortcut keyboards can be created here. Your controllers can be activated here. Wirecast does have their own X keys, so definitely consider using the X keys if you want to use a bigger production environment and also in your advanced section, this will let you know which video adapter you're using. This will also let you choose between your frame rates. So depending on what you're recording your videos with, you can change your frame rates here as well. Let's go ahead and close this window out and we'll go across the edit section. At this time, we really don't have anything in our Wirecast scenes to edit. In our switch section, this allows us to navigate from our preview to our output using different transitions. One transition that I do like that's not an actual transition is what's called auto live. And we'll talk about that as I do these series of videos. I definitely love the media section, which allows us to play and pause different video elements. We also have the output section, which will allow you to select your destination for live streaming, whether that's Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, or another destination. 
The virtual camera output will allow you to turn any of your Wirecast elements into a virtual camera that can be imported into video conferencing such as Zoom. Your canvas size is the size that you want to display out. I always recommend going with your highest possible display. In my case, it will be 1080p. And then you also have NDI outputs and we'll talk more about NDI in future videos. Your layout section will allow you to see only your preview window or only your live window. But I like to do live and preview, especially if I have multiple camera angles or multiple lower thirds so that I can really see what I am putting together before I make that live to my destinations. The replay and ISO element is a great resource for those that are into sporting events because it allows you to pause your video, rewind it, and replay that video again so that your live stream audience can see. The social aspect of Wirecast is connected to Facebook and Twitter. So if you leverage those platforms heavily, there are some tools that you can use inside of Wirecast to really enhance your broadcast. The Windows section allows you to do more controls. One of my favorite in this section is the PTZ controller. I own multiple PTZ devices. And so being able to control them right here inside of Wirecast is great. You also have what's called Rendezvous, which is a built-in integration for video conferencing. I want you to think about the ability to use Zoom, but it's built in natively into Wirecast. And their version is called Rendezvous. So this is a great tool that's built in, allowing you not to have so many other tools to create the broadcasts or the interviews that you really want to create. As we look down below the menu section, there is the element to stream, to record and to ISO record. The stream is self-explanatory. Once you select the stream button, you will be able to stream to those platforms that you had previously selected. The record button will allow you to have a local recording of your broadcast and the ISO record will allow you to isolate the recordings of each of those different elements. For example, if you're using three cameras, you can individually record all three of those. So let's build a basic scene inside of Wirecast 14. The thing that I really love about this platform is that you definitely have the ability to see the visual elements that you're putting on the screen. Unlike some free platforms, you don't see what it is that you're creating, but in Wirecast, you definitely can. So what I like to do is expand my layers so that the layers are bigger on the screen. Just by navigating to the far left, and waiting for the up down arrow to appear, I can simply drag to the size that I want to see. This also allows you to change the size in between your preview and your output by dragging it to the left or dragging it to the right. For the most part, I like to keep these even. Now on the first layer, I like to put in my logo type of elements. These are overlays, things that are very small that are not gonna necessarily be on the screen all the time. So I like to keep my logos as my first layer. So I'm gonna navigate to all items. I'm gonna look for my logo. And I'm gonna simply resize this and drag it to the corner of my screen. And for the next layer, I like to use any type of visual elements that I might include in my broadcast such as a screenshot or a video. This is typically what I like to put on my second layer. So I'll go into the add menu file. I'll look for an image that I have on my desktop here of a roller coaster, expand this out, and that would be on my layer two. For my layer three, I really like to put in my video camera here. So I'll go and select my Cam Link 4K device. And now I am on layer three. And on layer four, I typically have some type of screen sharing, whether that be a presentation, maybe a Zoom conference on layer four. But for example purposes, I will just add another picture just to make it a little bit easy for this example. And I will expand this picture out in the background. And on my final layer, I like to have my audio. 
I always want to make sure my audio is on the final layer because it's always going to be turned on and heard. And so for this case, I'm going to go into my audio sources, select my cam link audio. And as you can see, the menu bar is going up and down, letting me know that my audio is present. If you do not want a certain element to display on your Wirecast screen, you simply need to go to the first black square and click on clear layer. This will clear each layer. Now we can start fresh and clean. Now, if I just wanted to put myself on the broadcast, I would simply select my video source and also my audio source. And now you see in the preview section, my video and my audio. At this point, I would want this to be my live broadcast. In order to do this, I would look in the middle of Wirecast 14 and click on the arrow button. Now my preview is also now my output. This now can allow me to set up for my next shot. So let's say that I want to talk about a roller coaster and the only thing I want to show is the actual roller coaster. So what I'll do is select the roller coaster and deselect my camera and the only thing showing is the roller coaster. Another way that you can do this is only selecting the roller coaster image. Because layer two is on top of layer three, anything below that layer visually is canceled out. So I can select over and now I can talk about the roller coaster and as you can see, the audio meter is live on the right hand side of the screen. I always want this audio on the bottom layer for this reason, because I always want the audio to come through. Now, let's say that I want to talk about the roller coaster and my logo at the same time. I would simply add on my logo. We can see that it's all set up in preview, select over. And now my logo and the image of the roller coaster is available. If I want to remove them again, select clear layer, clear layer, select my camera over, and now I am on the screen. So Wirecast 14 gives you a lot of capabilities, and this is a simple walkthrough of the absolute basics that you can do with the platform. If you're brand new to the platform, I hope this video gives you a little idea of how you can get started using it. Wirecast does have a trial version, so definitely download that and start creating your first broadcast. And in the meantime, make sure you get subscribed to this channel if you wanna see more reviews and more detailed information on how to navigate and use the awesome features built inside of Wirecast. My name is Monty Weaver. Hope you got some value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.